Well, hello everyone. Today we're going to be fitting some new parts to test. These, so I thought it would be an opportunity to uh, have a look inside. These are currently for the magnets for the levers. As you can see, they've had to be recessed because what happens is with the Hall effect sensor, if it's too close to all these separate magnets, then you'll end up with the output wibbling as you go past them. Once you move them away a bit, it smooths out the magnetic field and you get a nice movement. But I have got arc segment magnets that are perfect for this coming, but they're very, very hard to get hold of. So I've been trying to get it to work with these. Currently, these magnets just clip in. Well, it's not quite down. So you just put them in and they just clip in easy. But we're going to be taking the front off this, looking at all its different parts. I might just want to have a look inside here for a minute. So if we hold this, so this is all just soldered on. These just clip in to here. This clips onto there and holds the pin in that holds all of this. I've got this working quite nicely now. With the button in there, and there's also you won't be able to see it, but there's a nut down there. There is a special adjusting screw. This is the first version. I've got a second version that's stronger for you to reach down inside and adjust the tension on the adjust the tension on the handle. Uh, if you print it in PLA, I suggest you don't put any grease on it, because I made that mistake and uh, and it didn't come out very well. Let me just adjust the camera out a bit so I can get at it. So we'll put this back in. You have to make sure you tuck all the wires in so nothing catches. This is supposed to be there we go. That way. It just clips in like that on your handle. One day we'll, we'll look at the wiring inside there. Anyway, this has got to come apart. We can have a quick look at these catches. So we've got a little ball with the catches on here. As you can see this one, as per the original, it only works going in that direction. Where this one will work in either direction. It's very handy actually if you want to fly other things like a P38 because you can link this and use it as a use that one as a uh, second throttle. But anyway, all these got to come apart. So the first thing we need to do we can take this nut off. Ooh, here. That's the other thing. I got uh, some red plastic. So that was a black one I painted red, which I actually prefer the look of to be honest, but the only disadvantage of that is as you use it, the paint will wear off and obviously um, it will look a bit horrid. You see, even just playing with it, the paint's starting to wear off there. So I painted one in red. Now, I haven't polished it yet. If you've got some uh, fine sandpaper and a bit of brasso, you could actually probably polish this up to look quite good. I don't like the colour quite as much. I got a sort of burgundy PLA and it was horrible to print. I had to turn the temperature right up and the bed temperature right up to get it to print. But it has printed fairly nice. But well, you can see these just clip on so they just sit and they're on there so all of that just clips together doesn't need any glue I'll take this nut off anyway that's just, just make sure we're in camera then these screws come out so this label actually is slotted so you can adjust where it moves a bit it doesn't need to be adjusted really because it's all going on parts made to fit it but you can actually, you actually have a little bit of adjustment if you really want it. I don't think it's necessary, but it was in, it was in the original, so it's in this one. It's also why a lot of these labels on originals are broken because they were, they were only thin aluminium, and then where the slot is and the screw does up on it, it all crack round here and fall to bits. Um, that's from the back. Move them out of the way. There's a little nut here. There's little captured hexagons in the back, so your nut just pushes in there. And that captures the, uh, that holds the hexagon for you. Let me just take these bottom two out. Yeah, that's not spread out as well. A little bit slack on those nuts, they could probably do with a slight tighten up on the design. Anyway, we'll take this apart. So, the 
front cover is a separate part so you can print this separately. Now the friction knob which actually controls the stiffness now one does off the stud. This stud, well this bolt runs all the way through. So you can see it's all gone floppy now. It's very long to get off. That part then comes off and this front cover will lift off and we'll see one of the features I've built in now is these. So because when you print things, especially the Z direction tends to always lose a bit of height and alter a bit. So this one, can you catch that in the lights? So you can see it. There you go. So each one's marked. There's a whole set of these up to about uh, 0.4 or 0.5. So you can adjust the whole sh stack and shim all the levers to fit in just right. So you can see on here as well, this one's an old version because I uh, decided that the felt wasn't really necessary in the end. But there's a wedge here and that's part of the original features that this would clip and catch. You'd have to push it over to then move back so you couldn't accidentally shut off the engine if you grabbed the wrong lever. In between each part of the stack is a, a crinkly washer. So this provides tension on all the bearings. We'll make sure we put them there. We've got to stack all this in order. That provides tension on all the bearings as you go. So all the bearings are always in tension. So there's no slack in them and it gives them a little, quite a nice feel to them. The bearing in each side of this, we'll be taking them out in a minute. Inside here, you've got the Hall effect sensors. These simply unclip. So this, you can solder these all in uh, sets of two outside. Currently, I haven't tidied up the wiring because I'm obviously taking this apart and putting it together quite a lot. The, this is the static part. Again, this has an adjuster on it. Another horn. I want to keep these in order because that one's the top one, so we'll put that down there. I don't want to lose any of these wobbly clips because I didn't bring the parts with me. I was staying away at the moment so I thought I'd do this while I was uh... right now these segments there's a little clip in here you just put your thumb under they pop out it's a bit of a clean so they just pop out and clip in so I'll put that to one side and the next part just lift out this one doesn't have any sensors on though it's the same part so it's got the uh... little bit of a fiddle. Make sure we take that washer off. That side. We want to keep these in order because they are stacked for them. So they've got little inserts for the clips that clip in to hold it. We'll put that one on top of that one. So that one's the bottom. So we'll get the next little clip off. So you just build this all as a stack. Now the throttle, oh, I've got to take the wires out for the throttle. All done. Got the board here, so all the switches in. We won't need this to test it because the throttle wires, um, the throttle works very well. It's got just the right clearance, so I've been testing different clearances on the magnets. And when this is done properly, this will be trimmed back to only of the thin wires and then a little protective C thing on them. And that will make it a lot more flexible. See that one just clips out. And then remove the throttle arm, pull that wire through, remove the next one, and this is an old case, it's got the bit for the felt, but we're getting rid of that, so we'll be printing a new case at some point. So the next two all effect sensors unclip. Does get fiddly down here because it's going to be quite. Okay, so I'll just have to tip that up. Okay, so that one's there. Clip 
just do catch on the there, take that off that'll help. Probably do a little more clearance from the hole in the middle. There we go. That one's off. See that one's not so that one's Marked on it how much extra width it has. Right, then take another clip off. The final part has come out. So we might as well start with this one. So now you've got to be careful. I've actually over tightened this and cracked that. But uh, they don't need to be done up that tight. Let's just unscrew straight out two little screws. I'll probably tighten these up in here, that'll help with that as well. I've already fitted the magnets in the new one. The bearings should come out, so we should just be able to start prying it up. That'll come out. We can push that at the other side. And we've got our two little bearings. Get rid of that and we'll get the new one. So, uh, oh, I've got to check which one it is. It does get confusing. Um, this, this one. Right. So, we'll first we'll push our bearings in. There we go. There we are. Put our lever on. So the thread is printed to so tighten them up a teeny bit. I've over tightened these before. This has been changed many, many times <laughs> for different ones. And then we can put this one back. So there's a crinkle washer already at the back. The bolt can't turn because it fits in a hexagon in the back there. Assemble the stack so we can start with that one. Make sure you don't catch up any of these parts. And then we need a crinkle washer. And then we can put the first one Fiddle. There we go, that can go back. We can clip in one of the Hall Effect sensors. So these just there we go, clip in like that. That holds them in place. Get this one in. go put in another washer and we can do the next lever so let's see next we've got the throttle so and we'll carry on like this till we've got them all done it just pulls through just pull the bearings out Push the bearings in the new one. And the tricky part here because this should all be trimmed back properly. We get these wires through this hole, this channel guides them through. We're going to get this bit through. And this uh, pushes down into there. We'll put the screws back in. Put a 
sprinkle washer in there already, so just poke these wires through here. Now these wires should all be trimmed up and then there's a plug go on here they're all soldered to. But because I'm still playing around with it, I haven't bothered with that because uh, I want to be able to take it apart fairly often and easily. Put another crinkle washer on. Then we put the next part in the stack on. So when you build this for the first time, what you probably want to do is build the stack without the spring washers in, just so you can uh, test it. So I'm going to carry on building this. We'll pause the video. When I've got it all together, we can put the front cover on and uh, we'll see how it goes. Now, one thing I did want to show while I do it is uh, putting these segments in is quite simple. You need to... Uh, Part in there so it fits in it just a bit. No, it's got to get past this. There you go, and they just clip in like that. Easy as that. We can put the next one in because I've uh, got ahead of myself. Just like that. So easy peasy to assemble. These bearings on here, that's spring washers on there. This one goes this way. Another spring. Right, and once we're ready, I'll uh, put it together. Right, now we're ready to put the front cover on, so we're all in position. This goes on first. It all fits into its little cams. And you've got to remember to fit this on. Sometimes the little washers catch on the threads. Ideally, what you should have is a smooth shot. Oh, no, they all seem to have done it. It's the flexions in on the back, so that's in. And we can get our label. Slide. Can okay, be tricky. There we go. That's in. This one's not fell out. No. So we can just position our label in the middle. Flip up one. And then we'll just hold the nut in the back for the other. Also secures this uh, stop here because it goes has an arm that comes out and runs through there so that's part of the spacer because the bolt goes through it it uh, holds it nice right we'll just a screwdriver but it will... you're not going to do it overly tight ah oh, is that the one with the nut fell out There we 
go, she's back together. Don't need to be very tight. That's actually quite stiff, so we slacken that off a bit. That's a lot nicer. So, we'll fire up the computer, plug this in. This, uh, I've got connected this one back up yet because I know that one's all right. So we're going to test this and uh, we'll be back in a minute. So I don't know how well this has come out as I've filled this all the wrong way round, I've just realised. But we'll move some of these. Some of these are backwards. So here we are. Here's the, this one. It's not looking too bad now. This one's working backwards, but apart from that, it needs a calibration adjusted finally a bit. Try this one. That one's working backwards as well. That's fairly good, and we'll try the throttle. The throttle's working the right way. Not that that makes a lot of difference, because you can just reverse it in game. Oh, there that is. I was looking for that. Put that on, right. There you go, there's the stop. So that's looking a lot better than it was. It's more than acceptable enough to use for a game controller. And you can always use this program to fine adjust it. So I'm quite happy with that. You can see the red line on there is the, uh, the raw data. It's depending on the spacing, some of these are more or less. And yeah. I'm quite pleased with that. That's probably going to be as good as you get. You get about mm, slightly under 1% interference between them. I think when this one... Throttle and this one move. It's from 54.8, 54.2. That's not too bad. And this one... Not too bad. So yeah, you're getting under one percent interference, which isn't it's about as good as managed as I've managed to get it. With the arc segment magnets, you may be able to get that slightly better, but they're so difficult to get that I uh, I think they're probably going to stick with this for the main design just so people can get the parts. But yeah, it's looking very good. I'm pretty much down to the finalised design now. So it's just writing all the manuals, really, and so doing the final soldering and testing. I'm making something so I can stick it on my desk and actually give it a test, perhaps doing some flying in-game. We'll be in the next time.